Hey folks, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Uh, people often ask me about dealing with really high winds when we're RVing. Um, my general rule of thumb for driving in wind is if it's getting to be about 30 miles an hour sustained with gusts up to 45, I'm usually getting ready to get off the road or, or planning not to drive in that. Um, it's doable, but once you once you get up there, it, it gets very uh, very um, tiring to drive in wind. Also, with our truck, we burn a lot of fuel. Um, the truck's not super powerful, so it, it uh, kind of is hard on it dragging the the rig through a, a gusty, uh, sustained headwind. So we'll pull off around 30 miles an hour. Um, anything up up above 45 sustained, I don't know. I wouldn't want to be in it. You can kind of look at the weather forecasts and, and they'll go into details as soon as you see where it says, you know, tall vehicles should be a uh, tall vehicle warning, you should really pull off. Anyway, I thought I'd do uh, a little tips video here, give you 10 tips of uh, what to do once you're hunkered down and getting ready to uh, experience some extreme winds. These are tips that can help min minimize the, the problems that could occur. Let's get to it. Number one tip would be to draw the slide in, or if you have multiple slides. Um, that'll sort of center the weight, and uh, I find if the slide is out, there's a lot more rocking goes on. Um, also, a lot of people have slide toppers, and if you get uh, really strong winds, those things will start flapping like crazy. And if strong enough, they can actually damage your slide toppers. So it's a good idea if convenient to uh, draw your slides in during a, a big uh, windstorm. The other reason is sometimes the wind can come up underneath and actually push the slide into the rig. And it can get rocking or it'll be pushing the, the slide room right in and slamming back which can be hard on the on the slide hardware. Number two is store all your outside items like your chairs and your tables, um, solar panels, anything that's that's not attached to anything might blow and uh, blow into your rig or somebody else's and cause damage. Of course, put your awning in, take your flagpole down, maybe uh, also make sure your beagle's in and locked up. There's nothing worse than a flying beagle to damage someone else's rig. And uh, also have a good look around, make sure other people have done it, you know, um, sometimes people might be away in the campground and uh, big wind kicks up. It might be just a good idea to uh, secure their items as well so it doesn't uh, go blowing into your rig. Number three, and this is uh, really advisable if you're out in the desert and there's a lot of dust blowing around, is close up all your windows and close up your roof fence. And sometimes I'll even stick a towel in any uh, any small places that air can be forced through, like the corners of the slides, because once that gets going, a lot of fine dust can get blown inside the rig. So if you can seal all that stuff up, it'll save a big uh, cleanup after the, the windstorm is over. Number four for fifth wheel owners, hook your truck up. Like uh, get it under the, get the, onto the hitch there, because um, nothing like having, like for, in my case, I got a nice 7,000 uh, pound anchor if I put, a, put my rig on that. Also that way you don't have to have the, the front landing jacks down. Um, what will happen if you're, if you're just relying on the landing jacks and you get a lot of wind coming in from the side, they'll be wiggling back and forth and they could end up uh, damaging the landing gear. I remember one year we were in Newfoundland and we were parked right on the coast and kind of the tail end of a hurricane went by and we were seeing winds up near 60 miles an hour coming in from the side and the rig was actually wiggling side to side so much during the night I could hear the landing jacks kind of making grinding noises so uh, that was kind of freaky. The next morning I got up and hooked the truck up and put the weight on the, onto the truck hitch. And that was a dramatic improvement by doing that. Number five is try to point the RV into the wind. You know, RVs are designed to go down the highway at like 60, 60 miles an hour. So uh, they're all aer aerodynamically 
designed to do that so if you can point into the the wind it'll make a, a huge improvement versus if you're side into the wind um, that's when the rig really starts to rock and roll and sort of at the back too the back's quite flat the other thing by pointing into the rig um, all my vent covers are pointed into the wind if I get the the wind coming from the back it can make quite the noise as the winds howling into those vent covers rattling everything on the roof number six fill up all your tanks with water so what will happen is on an RV like ours for instance all the tanks are very low in the rig so my water tanks at the back and then I have a galley tank a black tank and a shower tank and they're all 40 gallons 60 gallons fresh so I can if I fill them up I can put a thousand or fifteen hundred pounds very low on the rig so that lowers the center of gravity so it'd be much less likely to flip over if I get a huge side gust against the rig so if you can say you're in an RV park you can just fill them all up um, when we're boondocking I'm usually coming out with at least a full fresh tank so I at least have 500 pounds of water with me number seven is go up on top of the roof and just make sure everything is secured check all the nuts and bolts that are holding down your vent covers and your antenna and your AC covers just anything that's bolted down on the roof just double check it because stuff that may hang on fine when you're driving into the wind may not do so well if the winds coming drastically from the other the other way they may not blow off but the rattling might drive you crazy especially on the vent covers I remember I had a few loose nuts on one of them one time and when the wind hit it was a hell of a noise inside and it was so windy I couldn't go up there and fix it so we just had to put up with it so good idea before it hits just take a quick look on the roof make sure everything's really secured number eight look up look up and see what's above you that might fall on you especially if you're uh, camped under any type of trees you know one large branch coming down could really ruin your day so uh, make sure uh, when, before it gets windy and you're setting up to park somewhere don't park under anything that uh, might fall on you number nine make sure you have a good quality weather alert radio portable and run on batteries that way you can keep tabs on the storms as they're rolling through and you'll know if it's time to bug out which brings me to number 10 have a plan B um, RVs can only handle so much especially if you're in tornado areas or stuff like that um, you have gotta know if it's time to uh, head to something that's gonna shelter you a little bit more often the RV parks will have a uh, uh, a place to go to hunker down a lot of times it's in their laundry room it's a place with no windows cinder block building that type of stuff but having a good weather alert radio will will help you out there this one I got's a C crane I'm kind of a AM radio buff like to listen to it at night so kind of dual purpose for me Well, there you go. I hope those tips help you uh, combat some super high winds when you're out there RVing. Um, if there's anybody who has anything else to add, any more tips that I haven't covered or have experienced some stories of super high winds in their RV, feel free to comment in the comment sections below. Always interested in, in getting new tips and hearing about people's experiences. So until next time, Ray from LoveYourRV.com, happy trails, no problems with wind today, old happy face flags barely moving, I like that.